Years ago, ramming a black metal rod up your minis to keep them afloat was an acceptable alternative to brittle, transparent flight stands. And as much as I love effect designs, sometimes keeping it simple is where it's at. But the main issue with all those flight stands was that they had as much flexibility as a 70-year-old couch potato with arthritis. They could still be built Tonka Tough, sure, but in doing so, fitting them into transport cases was like playing Tetris with gingerbread houses. That's where we turn to our younger days for an unusual answer. Lego. Their modularity is world famous, and they can benefit your smaller flying models and even skimmers, if you're willing to commit some serious heresy. Not like Daddy Issues Galactic War Edition, I mean nuclear grade pop culture toy heresy. The pieces we're looking at in particular are these. The small toe socket connectors, the axle with toe ball, assorted Technic axles, and Technic connectors. Only a few ingredients to work some serious magic, so let's address the pros and cons of these bad boys. Like how they're dirt f***ing cheap. If you don't already own most or any of these pieces, you can cruise Bricklink to find them easily. This filled cart is still less than half of the shipping cost and will cover a sizable army's worth of jet bikes, speeders, or whatever random floaty things your army has. And these are new parts. Used runs even cheaper cheaper if you don't like the idea of using perfectly new LEGO. But as said before, their flexibility is what makes them truly shine. The socket joints have a firm friction fit and offer 360 degree rotation and 180 degrees of tilt to two sides. And thanks to LEGO's god tier quality control, Technic connectors are also guaranteed to be so perfectly flat it made the main character of Godzilla 2014 look dynamic. That means you can glue them right to the base and get them instantly perpendicular, unlike fussing around with custom rods. And that leads to the biggest perk of all. Because these are LEGO, they can be taken down easily for better storage. It's a lot less hassle to switch out bases if you don't like your previous one, or you need a custom base for some other reason. Or maybe even attach it to things that don't make much sense, but it's not like it's permanent so who f***ing cares, right? And if you don't care for this posability nonsense and just want modularity, you could go even cheaper with just a rod and two bushings. Now an obvious downside is they're not going to win Miss Table Topper, so you'll probably want to avoid these for paint competition entries, especially because the moving ball joint will guarantee more paint scraping than a pro-painted eBay army. Rest assured, at least that ball joint is only really an eyesore from awkward angles. But if you're still worried about someone seeing the ugly part of this design, just remember, from a tabletop point of view, no one should be at that angle unless they're checking line of sight or purposefully upskirting your model. And we all know anyone who upskirts without consent is a prime target for slapping and yelling. That said, saying the smart ass bird on YouTube insisted you could clap someone's cheeks for eye your toys in other regions? probably won't hold water in court. Now another thing to note is that this relies on friction to make variable poses, so heavier models are out of the question. Even upgrading to the heavier bionicle style ball and sockets is only really viable for the larger plastic skimmers or flyers, so you should probably stick to the heavy metal album for the Forge World stuff. And while we're at it, we'll address the other modular competitor, magnets. There are awesome pre-made magnet stands on the market, and while they look great, you're certainly paying a premium. They got your answer for the heavier flight stands though, Absolutely an option for posable flight stems, but this LEGO design remains the most cost-efficient and was built to withstand roughhousing toddlers. Plus, if something breaks, the LEGO one is that much easier to fix. This was more of an opinion article than one of my crass courses because, well, using LEGO should be straightforward, but here's some tips after doing this myself. When selecting parts off Bricklink, they come in a few varieties, but the color doesn't really matter because, remember, committing heresy here. Gluing and painting LEGO. Yup, sacrilege, and the ninth deadly sin right after clapping when the plane lands. As for gluing them, be sure that the connector won't have any obstructions on the model due to its square design. For the Star Weaver, I had to shift it back a bit since the Shuriken Cannon's cutaway was still too small. Since Technic rods come in different lengths, just be sure to snag a few at the standard flight stand height. That way you can avoid someone claiming you're gaming for advantage. You can save the wackier designs for casual games. And for the best blend of durability and modularity, I recommend gluing only the socket to the model and maybe the ball joint to the chosen Technic connector. It's far less stressful to remove from the flight stand rather than disconnecting from the ball joint. Should be better for its longevity too. Hope that gave some food for thought. Thanks for stopping by. Have a f***ing awesome day and I'll see you next time.